to um, day three of our social media boot camp. And today I want to dive into um, actually, this is day four. Never mind. Welcome to day four <laughs> um, of our social media boot camp. And today I want to talk about photos and photos of life. So, not always um, selfies but more of like your posts about everything, whether it be food or your family or your workouts or motivational quotes and stuff like that. So we made a little slideshow. And I am excited for you all to see it. All right, I'm just gonna dive right in. So photos of life, your everyday life in your pictures because you run a um, you know, a business off your social media. So guys, the way that you're presenting your storefront is now you know, how you're presenting your business in your pictures and in your posts on your Facebook, which is huge. This can make or break your business. I'm telling you, 90% of my success club points every single month come from my posting and people reaching out to me from the way that I run my social media. So our first tip is that if you're not sure, use resources around you. One of our favorite is Pinterest. Guys, it's free. Download it if you don't have it. There is a lifetime of inspiration available on this site. Seriously, it's amazing the ideas, the quotes. You can see what other people have done and recreate it. You can search for things like fitness photos, quotes, recipes, food photography, um, and you can see what looks nice on there. And so if you're seeing what looks nice on there, then you're seeing what yours should look like. If your post that you're thinking about putting on doesn't look like that food photography photo on Pinterest, then try again. Um, if you have the app called, um, I think it's called Pic Collage, delete it, please, please delete it. Because collages are just so unappealing to the eye. And this is something that I have figured out with a lot of trial and error on my Facebook. It's just too much. They look sloppy, they look, you know, they just don't look appealing. That nobody knows where to look first, and so your message gets lost. Um, especially if you're one of the people that's doing collages and a quote. So you've got like four or five pictures and words. It's just too much. Pick one picture and go with it. I'm going to dive into that more here with some examples. But using pictures from Pinterest is inspiration, and the quotes you find belong in the content, not in text across the photo, unless you do it in a way that looks appealing. So that's, again, what we were saying is that you don't want it to be too much. I've played with a lot of different things, and I have found out that the less I have on a photo, the better it does. Does that mean that I never put words on a photo? No. But I do try to limit that, and I do try to um, really make sure that my photo is what's going to make people stop, and then they read what I write. And in my writing is where I've got my really good content. I've got something that's going to get them interested or something that relates to them because I'm always posting to my avatar. So I'm posting to a busy mom who wants to be home with her baby or who wants to work from home or who loves fitness and loves results. Like that's who I'm posting to. So when they read it, they're like, oh, she's talking to me. But they're not going to read it if your picture is yucky and it doesn't make them stop their scroll. So some examples here are on the top left. There's a picture of me and I have words on it. But guys, it's one picture. It's not a quote. It's super crisp, clean. You can still see my tummy and my butt, which was, I was talking about fitness and stuff in it, and I was talking about booty gains and things like that. So it doesn't take away from what I'm showing. Another one that I wanted to show, um, that we both wanted to show, was an example of a collage that we did for, of our kids. So if I do a collage, it's usually a similar photo but like two different angles. So like you can see the one of Jackson here on the bottom left. That's like the pretty much the same photo. It's just two different shots. You know, one of them he's pointing to it, one of them he's smiling for the camera. 
it's not too crazy where it's like, which one do you look at first? Two totally different images. They're pretty much the same image with minor differences. Same thing with this one that Allie did of Aurora here, coloring. It's the same image, just different angle of her coloring. Um, Allie created an example over here on the right of what some people are doing with collages, where they're literally taking pictures, like 12 pictures of a pretty sunset or of you know, a pretty campfire or of them with post-workout or them with their shake. And they're doing like a huge collage like this and then putting words you can barely read over the top. It, it does not, if you can see it next to these two, you know, which one looks cleaner and nicer to you? Um, so we just wanted to kind of create an example and show you there of how what we have found to work best with collages. If you have the Pick Collage app, delete it because you can make these simple collages here with no border in between the pictures um, and like two similar photos like these with a different app that we're going to share with you guys um, at the end of the slideshow. So delete Pick Collage, please. It's going to save you. <laughs> okay. Some examples of food photography. These ones on the left are amazing examples of great food photography. This one up here is just, it's an over angle, not like a weird I'm sitting down and I'm too lazy to stand up and come down on the plate angle. It's an over angle, it gets all the food in. There's a clean table here. I mean, all you see is a fork, which looks nice. You could even lose the fork and have it just be a clean table, but you don't want your papers here and your cup here and your hand here with chipped nail polish and stuff like that. Um, you know, this is a business, guys, so you have to treat it like a business. So as silly as it seems, it's just a food picture. It's not just a food picture. This one here is a nice close-up, the one with the shrimp. Um, nice close-up of a yummy meal that looks great it's nice and close up you can't see all the mess behind it um, you can see the detail and the way it was cooked and what's on the shrimp it looks great this one down here of Allie's she made a whole pan of these guys but she zoomed in on one so that you could really see how nice they looked and look how yummy that looks it's when you do pictures that are zoomed out, like this one here with all these tin foils, where you show your whole entire meal spread out on a counter, and it doesn't look appealing. It doesn't look appealing because I can see the mess, I can see you know the aluminum foil, I can see the containers. It just doesn't look good. Um, or same thing where I've been seeing food pictures lately of you guys already ate like half of it, and then you take a picture and it's like all the scraps, like this bottom right one. That doesn't look appealing to anybody scrolling through. I know to you it's appealing because you just ate it and it was yummy, but you need to think about what people are seeing and what's going to get them to want to try these recipes and try your meal plan and try your Shakeology, stuff like that. Same thing with this pizza one up here. This is an amazing, it's a great example of healthy eating. It's a cauliflower crust pizza. It looks delicious. I would love to eat that pizza, but the picture doesn't do it any justice. I see the burnt scrappy edges. I see... This parchment paper, it does not look good. You know, if this were to be a zoomed in photo of just the pizza, maybe at like a downward angle of it, and all I could see was like the pizza, or maybe even if it was a selfie of her taking like with a piece of the pizza up in her hand, that would have been better. Um, you know, again, it was an amazing recipe. This pizza looks delicious. If this were sitting on my table, I'd want to eat it right now. But to people scrolling through who aren't used to the concept of healthy eating and cauliflower crust pizza, this does not look appealing. Same with this picture right here. We've got asparagus and chicken. That's like my go-to meal. But I can't really talk because I do a lot of pictures on paper plates. Um, so I'll leave that one alone. But I mean, you see a magazine here, it's distracting. You see some stuff here in the bottom corner. It's just not as clean and crisp and nice of a photo as this one on the top left here where it's just the food on a nice plate, just a fork, you know, nothing distracting in the photo. Allie was kind enough to do a great example of a Shakeology picture for us. So we see a lot of, you know, drinking my Shakeology and you see, you and we see coaches posting stuff with their bag of Shakeology or their Shakeology cup like this where it says it across it. And um, even, even stock photos from the internet of nutritional information from Shakeology. And 
even photos of like the workouts and the workout sleeves and stuff like about to get my size on with a picture of the size DVD guys that just that just screams yuck okay you are selling you you are selling your lifestyle your happiness your beauty your confidence your whatever it is you're selling of you that's what it is you are not selling a product I mean technically you are but that's not what's going to drive people to want to work with you you need to be showing you and how what it does for your life an example of a post that I see with this left picture and saying doing my Shakeology is I'll see something like drink my Shakeology today on the way to work mmm I did chocolate and banana it was delicious an example of this picture here on the right of Allie looking beautiful and perfect lighting and contoured face and her Shakeology is already made and in her hand. And look at that cute little baby bump. She's showing it off, resting the Shakeology cup on it. Is I could see her diving into a big inspirational post about life and how she's been feeling with her pregnancy and how she's on the go today with Aurora and um, Aurora wanted McDonald's so she said you know what my kid deserves McDonald's so she stopped and got a McDonald's but before they went to do that she made up her quick shakeology and it saved her from eating a meal that she would have regretted something that people could relate to not just got my shakeology in it was yummy because that doesn't do anything for anybody you know you need to find a way to connect your message connect how shakeology is helping you with your goals to other people and when you look like a product pusher, like in this left photo, it turns people off. They're scrolling and they just see a picture of you repping a product and all they think is, oh, just another one of her, you know, just another one of those people trying to sell me something. The one on the right looks like a friend, looks like somebody that you know and follow on Facebook that looks beautiful. So you actually stop and like it because she looks great. And then you actually read what she wrote, which is how you actually get people to join your group is if they actually read your posts, guys. And they have to be good posts. So again, I literally saw these two photos on the left in a, in a post last week. Um, this photo from, this photo from the internet showing Shakeology's healthy facts was a post that one of our coaches did. And I get where you're coming from, but do you really think that people stop and read that? You need to think about what would interest you and what would draw you to try Shakeology. And I know it's not the nutritional facts on the back of the bag. I know that that's not it, especially if you're one of my coaches, because I don't even know the nutritional information on the back of the bag. So whatever I did to draw you to it was definitely not talking about the nutritional value. Same with the size, guys. All you look like is a product pusher. This post right here is a, an example of me. Um, I did this post. This is what, uh, what I usually do if I'm going to put words. I'll do like a little backsplash like this, and then I'll put just simple words. I'll make sure you can still see me and whatever it is I'm talking about. In this example, I was talking about how I wanted to get my workout in, but we didn't have time because we had to hurry up and get um, the house clean before we had guests coming so I did a workout while I did the dishes which is why I'm standing here in front of my full sink of dishes um, you know I talked about what I did to get that workout in in my busy everyday mom cleaning up the house life I talked about 21 day fix extreme but I didn't show a picture of the package I talked about getting my Shakeology in that morning um, while I made the kids breakfast because I didn't want to eat what they were eating because they were eating naughty stuff, but I didn't show the nutritional value here of the Shakeology. It's a picture of me. It's a picture of what I'm doing, but what I choose to write about in the post, I can write about whatever because that's where you put the good stuff is in the writing. The picture needs to get them to read it. And I promise you pictures of stock products and pictures of nutritional value will not get people to read what you have to say. Here's another example of the fact that it doesn't always take one second. This is a business. If you want it to grow like a business, you have to treat it like a business, which means that you don't only have one second to snap a quick photo and be happy with it. If you don't like the way that photo looks, you have to try again. So this was this amazing breakfast that Allie made. 
And her first picture that she took was this one on the left. And she was like, that does not look appealing. Like, how am I going to show this and make it look yummy? So she tried a couple angles. She broke it up into a couple bites and she ended up posting this picture on the right. How much more delicious and inviting and appealing and how much more do you want to try this recipe with this picture on the right than the left? The point is, is that guys, sometimes I take 20 selfies of me before I post one. Sometimes I literally take my food and dump it onto a different plate. Sometimes Allie has to cut it up and put her fork in it and take her fork out of it and change the lighting and, you know, all sorts of stuff to get the picture right. But again, she knew that this was a good recipe and she wanted people to actually read about it. And she knew that if she put up a picture that didn't look very yummy, everybody would just keep scrolling. If you want people to read what you have to say, if you want people to say, okay, I've been hearing so much motivational, inspiring, yummy stuff from, you know, from Allie that I want to join her group, they have to read what you're saying first. And the only way they're going to read it is if they stop their scroll on your photo. So this is a great example from Allie of, you know, how you do have to play with it sometimes. Okay, these are awesome because I actually went back, I re-downloaded my Pic Collage app and scrolled through all my old photos. And I am beyond shocked these are real posts of mine from when I first started coaching. But the point that I'm making here is that everybody makes these mistakes. So don't feel bad if, if the things that I've said or if some of the examples that I've shown you feel like they're speaking directly to you because honestly, they were speaking directly to me when I first started coaching. This is a real post I did, why today is awesome. And I listed out all the reasons on my photo. Are you kidding me? Like that, <laughs> I would never do that now. Like nobody would ever stop and read this. It, the picture's terrible and small and it just looks awful. I've got the words going across my forehead. I can't even, I don't even know how to talk about this right now. Um, this picture here was at Summit. So this was a year ago. I was, I did this huge collage of all these cool photos when I worked out with Autumn. And instead of just picking like one or two really great ones, I wanted them all. And so I put all these photos on this collage. And I remember wondering why nobody liked it. And that's because, like, look at it. It's so unappealing to the eye. You don't know where to look. You don't even know what you're looking at. And I see a lot of you doing these kinds of collages with your Pick Collage app. And that's why that app is dangerous. Same here. This is food that I made. All of these look delicious. But instead of me making this busy, awful, you can see all the different corners here. Like, it just looks seriously disgusting. Instead of doing that, what I would do now if I had like a food prep day where I had all these pictures to take at once is I would take all the pictures. I would choose one to post about right now. Like maybe this egg cup one, I would do like a nice close up of these egg cups and make a good post about it. And I would save all these awesome pictures of the food in my phone. They'd still be there. And I would use those photos in a post tomorrow or the next day or the next day or a day where I'm busy and don't have anything to post about. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, what should I post about? What should I post about? Guys, that's where you scroll through your phone. and You're like, oh, yeah, I had like six pictures of food that I didn't use. And you're able to create something off of those. Don't feel the need to take when you're taking all these awesome pictures. Like I went to the zoo with Jackson yesterday and I took probably like 200 photos and normally like the old coach me would have made some terrible collage like this well the new coach me took used one I posted one photo of Jackson and I with the drafts but now I have so many amazing ones that I can use on days where I have nothing to post about on days where I don't feel good on days where I forget my phone and you know and I don't take any pictures at the zoo I can use one from the old zoo time nobody knows um, so don't feel the need to use all your pictures at once. I can relate to that feeling. As you can see, I did it, but I'm telling you, you're going to help your business. If you focus on having one crisp, awesome message, one crisp, awesome photo and saving the rest for a different day. Okay. I want to talk about your workout pictures too. So angle is everything. I love this one I found on Pinterest down here that shows that she's lifting up her boobs, <laughs> that she's got her body rotated, good lighting on her abs, forward leg. You know, this is awesome. 
And these are just a few examples of workout selfies that I've done. So this is one of me on the right here, just like kind of goofy face, black and white, showing a flexed arm. This one over here is showing flexed arm and abs. Um, and then here over here is like fully clothed, just like got my workout in picture. But I, what I want to show you about these is that, first of all, like 90% of my clients come to me from the from workout stuff. So workout selfies to me are like huge. And what I did was I went through like all of our coaches stuff and looked through their workout selfies. And what I'm seeing in many, not all, but many, is that you're actually doing a selfie trying to show your workout selfie. Like you're literally pointing the phone and taking like a picture of you flexed and all I can barely see is your shoulder and your bicep and it looks terrible. Take a selfie of you in a mirror so that I can see your full body, your full abs, your full image. If you don't have a mirror, go to Walmart and buy one of those $10 hang on the back of your door mirrors, guys, because you need one. You taking a picture of your arm and all I see is your shoulder and your arm is not good. And that's why you're only getting two likes on these photos because they don't stop anybody's scroll. Um, another one that I saw is these really awkward angles of you taking a picture in a mirror, which is good, but you're super close to the mirror and you've got your phone like, you know, at your chest so that your face shows. So the angle is like up on your face so I can see like your chin doing its, you know what I mean? Like it's not an appealing angle of you. Don't stand so close to the mirror. Back up. Get your full body in there. Like look how far back I'm standing from that mirror on the left to be able to get my entire body in. And honestly, and this was a cropped image. I, I was even further back, but I zoomed in. That's what's cool is that you can take your photos, guys, and you can zoom in if you need to. But don't stand so close that, you know, you're the phone is under you and you're looking down and now you've got like a double chin and nobody can even see your body in your photo. You know, like if you're showing a workout photo, show a workout photo, back up, flex those legs, flex your arm, show your abs, whatever it may be. But make sure that they're appealing. And again, you can go on Pinterest and you can type in workout photography and you're going to see how these people take their workout photos and how yours should look also. So I was going to try to take examples of bad photos, um, like try and reenact other people's because obviously I don't want to use, you know, someone's photos in here and hurt anybody's feelings. That's not what I'm trying to do. But um, sometimes, you know, I'm trying to give tough love so that you guys can all reach your goals. Um, I was going to try to reenact photos, but I honestly couldn't do it. I just like don't even have a mirror that I can stand that close to. But I hope that you all understand what I'm saying as far as, you know, taking selfies in the mirror instead of taking an actual selfie of you with a flexed arm and nobody can even see your face in it um, and standing too close to the mirror. And, you know, like maybe take a picture of the slide so that you can see how this girl is talking about lighting and shadows and, you know, how my images look and stuff like that. So, Apps that we use to edit, I love Word Swag. Word Swag is like a really cool one that has words like already done up so you can figure out like they look really nice on your photo. Photofy is the app that I use to do those two pick collages with no border. Um, so that's what I would use if I were you to do collages from now on instead of pick collage. And then Studio is awesome because you can, it literally takes your picture and it will like remix and you can pick out inspirational quotes and things like that. And it looks clean and professional because they already did it. All you're doing is putting the picture behind it. Um, and then I love Rana. So I downloaded and I had to pay for these, but I got like the three here, the RD Magic, the Rana and the Rana Collage. I never use the Rana Collage, but the magic one is where I edit and, you know, square in and zoom in on my photos and use filters. And then in this Rana Designs one is where I can put, like, writing and I do these cute, like, with the ink splash here and put the writing in on it and um, stuff like that. So those are the main apps that I use because, honestly, you don't need to over-edit your photos. Um, you know, if you have a good enough photo, you know, all it is here is plain. All this one here is a, a border on one side and some writing. All this one is here is a border 
with a, some writing and like a cute little template design on, on the side because it's black and white. So I wanted to put a little bit of color. Um, you don't need to have corners and pictures and hearts and fonts and words and craziness because you're just making your picture look cluttered and tacky instead of clean and professional. So I hope that helped with ideas for how to run your photos. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to, um, to post in the comments and I will gladly help you out. If you want to post some pictures and get feedback or advice, please, please, please do so guys during this week. Take advantage of the fact that we're sitting in this group and want to help you master your posting. You know, um, if you're, this is the week for you to be sh sharing with us like ideas that you have and getting really good feedback from people who really do great on social media with their photos and their words and their writing and stuff like that. So like I said, this group's going to be open for this week and weekend. And after that, it's not. So take advantage of the help that you have right now. Bye.